This is a video tutorial on how to draw Lewis diagrams and also line diagrams. Although very, very similar to each other, there are some slight differences between the two, which we are going to cover in this video clip. But first things first, what is a Lewis diagram or a line diagram? Essentially, it's a way of showing how compounds are put together, how they are assembled. What does the structure of that molecule or compound look like? When assembling your molecule or compound, there are a few rules or guidelines you need to follow. First, we have to understand why atoms uh, combine with each other in the first place. Well, they lose or gain electrons in order to achieve a full valence shell. Because a full valence shell provides stability. Thus, metals tend to lose electrons to achieve stability, while nonmetals tend to gain electrons to achieve stability. Now, nonmetals may also equally share electrons for stability. So what I mean by that is, um, well, let's take fluorine for example over here. Fluorine exists in group 7A, meaning it's got seven valence electrons in its outer shell. In a Lewis diagram, we represent the electrons by dots or X's or whatever shape you want, but essentially you draw it around the actual element itself, the symbol. So there's a seven electrons for this fluorine, and here are the seven electrons for this fluorine. Now in order to uh, achieve a full valence shell, fluorine, this fluorine needs one more valence electron, while this fluorine also needs one more valence electron. Unfortunately, one fluorine cannot steal another fluorine's electron and just take it away like that to achieve its full valence shell, because it leaves this uh, fluorine unstable, and that's never going to happen. So instead of just a total giveaway or a takeaway, what they're going to do instead is share their electrons equally. And so what happens is this pair of electrons will orbit this fluorine half the time, and then they'll orbit this fluorine the other half of the time, providing stability. Now if I just erase my rough work over here, oops, a little too far, so this would be called a Lewis diagram for a fluorine molecule. Now a line diagram simplifies the Lewis diagram slightly by putting a line instead. When I draw a line between these two elements, these two symbols, these two letters, it basically means that I have a shared electron pair right there. So instead of drawing a dot and an X, I should basically just draw a line over here to represent that a shared electron pair is in between these two fluorine atoms. Now sometimes a line diagram may ask you to show the unpaired electrons or electron pairs, lone pairs of electrons rather, and so you'd have to write these ones in as well to show that the other electrons are also still present around the fluorines. So this is a bonding pair of electrons, bonding pair of electrons, whereas these ones over here are lone pairs of electrons. Now because this is one chemical bond, uh, we call it a single chemical bond. Uh, for, uh, if you want to shorten it, it's basically just a chemical, a single bond. So by equally sharing their electrons, uh, each fluorine gets a full valence shell. So over here, this fluorine gets a full valence shell half the time, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. And the other half of the time, this fluorine gets a full valence shell, 2, 4, 6, 8. And this would be called a single bond. Now it's also possible to have a double bond. Let's take for example an oxygen molecule. Oxygen is in group 6, so it has 6 valence electrons. So here I've drawn 6 valence electrons, 6 valence electrons. Notice how I'm using dots versus x's, that way I can distinguish which electron belongs to which atom. So oxygen needs how many more? Two more electrons to become stable, right? It's got six right now, it needs eight, so it needs two more electrons over here and two more electrons over here. Because again, this oxygen can't just steal this oxygen's electrons right off the bat, it would leave it unstable. So what they need to do is share equally. And so these four electrons, or these two pairs of electrons, would over this oxygen over here half the time, allowing to have four eight electrons, stability, and the other half of the time they'd orbit over around here. Four, eight, eight electrons, stability. Now the line diagram version of this simplifies it slightly by putting just a line between these two oxygens. What the heck happened there? A uh, line between these two oxygens. 
where each line represents one pair of bonding electrons and that's why we have two lines over there and of course this would be called a double bond and there we have it oxygen finally the last possibility is the triple bond looking at nitrogen we see that it's in group 5a meaning that it has five valence electrons in its outer shell as such, each nitrogen needs three more electrons in order to achieve the full valence shell. Because right now it's got five. In order to get eight, it needs three more electrons. Obviously, you can't just steal it from one and leave the other one unstable. So what we need to do is share. And so these six shared electrons will orbit here half the time. Six plus two is equal to eight, stability. And the other half the time, they'd orbit over around here. Six plus two equals eight, stability. And we can represent this in a line diagram by drawing three bonding pairs of electrons. Three lines over here, each line representing the bonding pair of electrons. That is a horrible drawing. Alright, so now that you have the basics, let's try out some sample questions. How this worksheet is going to work is uh, essentially I'm going to draw each and every answer. And as I do so, I will tell you what my thought process is. I recommend that you pause each after each question, pause the video, and try your best to do it on your own. Uh, once you've done it, press play and compare your answer to mine. So let's start off with uh, C3H8, which happens to be propane. Now carbon is in group 4A, meaning that it has four valence electrons. So I'm going to show four valence electrons around this carbon. Now here's a little hint for you. Anytime you see a hydrocarbon, so a molecule or a, a molecule essentially, that uh, is comprised of hydrogen and carbon, so it's called a hydrocarbon. All right. Uh, we tend to use the carbon as the backbone for our structure. All right. So use it as the backbone for our structure. So I need C3, so three carbons. So I'm just going to draw another carbon over here and another carbon over here. And I'm going to represent them with different electrons. And this one I can use circles again, what the heck, since they are separate, as long as I can tell which electrons belong where. Now if you take a look at hydrogen, hydrogen is in group 1A, meaning that it has one valence electron. So I'll draw the one valence electron over here. Now I have eight hydrogens available and I need to place them somewhere in this molecule in order to make this whole molecule stable. You'll notice that these carbons are sharing one electron here and sharing one electron pair over here. So this carbon already has one, two, three, four, five. It needs three more electrons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a three hydrogens surrounding it and each hydrogen donates one electron. Let's double check. So this hydrogen has lost its electron, so it is stable now. It has lost its out of electron, so it does, it's got a full valence shell. Wait, scratch that, it has no shell anymore. But in any case, it is stable by losing that one valence electron. So this H is stable, check mark. This H is stable, check mark. And so is this H over here. Let's check this carbon over here. Does it have eight electrons? Two, four, six, eight. So yes, this carbon is stable as well. Now, looking at this carbon, it has two, four, six, meaning that it needs two more electrons to become stable, to have that full octet structure, the eight electrons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another two H's, one on the top, one at the bottom, and each of them is going to donate one of its electrons. So this H has given away its electron, it is stable. This H has given its electron, it is stable as well. Take a look at the carbon, does it have eight electrons? Two, four, six, eight. This carbon is also stable. Now, I've used up one, two, three, four, five hydrogens so far out of a possible eight. I still have to make, uh, use three hydrogens. And take a look at that. I have three unbonded pair of electrons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them around here. And as I do, each hydrogen is now stable because it's lost an electron. And this carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons and is also stable. So this is the Lewis diagram over here. If I want to draw the line diagram though, 
essentially what I'm doing is I'm replacing every single bonding pair of electrons with just a line. So here are my H's and each one of these bonding pair of electrons represented by a line. Line, 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 line. So as you can see a line diagram does certainly um, simplify the drawing a lot more. Instead of having all these weird dots, X's and squares or triangles or whatnot, just simple lines and we're good to go. And since there are no unpaired uh, or rather lone pair of electrons, I don't need to draw anything else in there. So there's my line diagram for C3H8. All right, let's take a look at the next question, C6H12. So again, I have another hydrocarbon, hydrogen and carbon, a molecule made up of these two elements. So I'm going to use the carbon as my backbone again. And there's my carbon backbone. Now I'm going to simplify things a little bit. Instead of using a dot and X, I'm just going to go straight up and just use the line diagram format to simplify things a little better. So please remember that each line represents a bonded pair of electrons. There are two electrons in each line. Now I've got eight electrons, or rather eight or twelve hydrogens, I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill them all up here and bond a hydrogen to each and every one of them. Now in so doing, I am actually causing a, uh, forming a single bond. So there should be a square over here representing the electron that was given by the hydrogen. But I'm just going to replace those with lines as well, just to make things easier for me. And there we go. So remember, each line represents a bonded pair of electrons. However, there's a problem. I have too many H's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But I should only have 12. So I need to get rid of two hydrogens. I'm going to remove these two, which means this is not a bonded pair of electrons anymore. They're just single electrons. So I have the right number of hydrogens, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But these two carbons are unstable. Let's take a look at this carbon. Does it have four bonds? Yes, it has four bonds. So 2, 4, 6, 8 electrons. It's happy. 2, 4, 6, 8. It's happy. 2, 4, 6, only 7, though. So this is not happy right now. 2, 4, 6, 7. This is also not happy. This one on the other hand, 2, 4, 6, 8. Happy, 2, 4, 6, 8. Nice and stable. So these two carbons are not stable right now. They each need one more electron. Oh wait, look at that. Why don't we just share these two electrons here? In so doing, you have made a bond, a double bond. And I'll represent that with another line over there. So now these guys are well, happy. Ooh, that is a distorted face. Okay. And there you have it, C6H12. Now, with these Lewis diagrams, there are multiple answers. So, for instance, instead of putting the double bond between the third and the fourth carbon, I could have put it on the between the second and the third carbon over here, and it would still be the same answer. It would still be stable as well. See? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, C6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, H12. And every carbon is happy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. Each carbon has a full valence shell. So as long as you can uh, draw up a structure that is uh, stable and every carbon is uh, has a full valence shell, every hydrogen has uh, given away its electron, then it's all good. It's all fair game. So there are multiple answers. And there you have it, C6H12. Let's take a look at the next one, C4H4.